In this video, we're going to have a look at percentiles and how you can calculate them in Power BI. We're going to look at what it is, why use it in the first place, and an overview of some of the functions that you can use in DAX to calculate percentiles. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernan and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel, where we cover tips, tricks, and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So I've recently been engrossed playing chess recently, and I'm looking at my full stats here in my rating, and I have a stat here called percentile, which is 87.4%. If I hover over the question mark here, it tells me that this percentile means this is the percentage of players whose rating is lower than yours. And that's a pretty simple explanation of what percentile is. Percentile basically shows how my rating is ranked compared to other people's ratings. So with my rating here, this basically says that 87.4% of players are lower rated than me, which means that there are 12.6% of players whose ratings are higher than me. So there are lots of chess players in chess.com, so it's probably not the best way to visualize this. So let's have a look at a more simpler data set so I can illustrate to you how to and what percentile actually means. So here I have a simpler data set here, which is just a simple table with a bunch of students and their test scores. And let's say we want to know which scores belong to the 90th percentile across all of these student test scores that we have here. And luckily, Power BI provides us a function, a percentile function to calculate this for us, making our lives a little bit easier. So let's do that. So let's create a new measure here. And I'm just going to call this percentile. And then we're going to start typing percentile here. And for now, we're going to use the inclusive version dot inc. It asks for two things here. It asks for the column that we want to measure. In this case, we're going to give it the test score. And then the K, which is essentially what the percentile is ranging from zero to 100%. So in this case, we're looking for the 90th percentile. So we're going to do 0 0.9. If we close that and put in a card. And this simple function returns us the 90th percentile in our list here. This means that any score above 88 4 puts you in the 90th percentile of the test scores that we have here. So let's go back to that measure, the percentile measure that we've just created. And as you noticed, we are using the inclusive version, the INC version. But if I just do a percentile here, you'll notice that there are a few other percentile functions that we can use. So what are the differences between all of these? So there are two versions of percentile that we can use here, inclusive or exclusive. So by default, and in most cases, when you're calculating percentile, you want to be using inclusive. And that's because it takes into account all of the values that you have in your data set that you give it. Exclusive, on the other hand, excludes the highest and lowest values that you have in your data sets. And there are a handful of examples of when you'd use it. So for example, if you have a scenario in which you have the highest and lowest values to be widely different from your scores, for example, and you're only interested in the middle value without taking into account those uh, big dips and high highs. In this case, you would want to be using exclusive to be a little bit more rigorous with your percentile calculations. However, in most cases, you want to use uh, inclusive so that you take into account all of the different values that you have in your range. To show you the difference, let's, let's leave it to inclusive first. And if I change this to zero, what it will do is it will just give me the lowest value, which is uh, 23 is the lowest score that we have. And if we change that to one, which is the hundredth percentile, it will just give us the highest score that we have, 98. However, if we change this to exclusive, if we hit enter, you will get an error. Uh, same thing if you change this to a zero. And that's because, as I mentioned, exclusive uh, doesn't include the highest and lowest values when it's calculating the percentile. So let's bring this back to inclusive and let's bring this back to the 90th percentile. Let's say we want to change this table now into a visual and we want to highlight which students are in the 90th percentile of scores. So in this case, we're actually going to change this into a bar chart. 
to make it a little bit easier to read, something like this. And we're actually going to update the percentile measure that we've created to use an iterator version. And that's because we want to modify the context for calculating the percentile and remove the row context. So the iterator versions that I'm talking about is the X version. So when you uh, when we were writing the percentile, you can see that there are X versions of the percentile functions, and they are just the iterator version. So it lets you add a table and an expression when you're doing the percentile calculations. So first of all, we're going to change this to use the inclusive version of the iterator. We are going to use scores as our table, and then we're going to use the test score without modifying the expression here. And then same thing, 0 0.9 as our K. But here we're going to remove the row context by using the all function, just so that for every row, the percentile is the same, because otherwise we're doing the percentile of one value in each row. So at the moment, you won't see any difference here. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to create another measure to control and change the color of the bars based on what we have in the percentile measure. So I'm just going to change this into color and I'm going to create an if statement. And if the test score, wrap it with max, is greater than or equals to the percentile, I want the color to be blue. Else, I want this to be light gray. So if we go to our bar chart here, change the formatting, change the bar, change the conditional formatting for the colors of the bar, we'll use field value, and then we'll look for this color measure that we've just created. So as you can see, it now highlights which students belong to the 90th percentile of scores. Now, lastly, if you want to control what the percentile is that you are analyzing here so that you dynamically change what is highlighted in our scores table here uh, based on a user selection, we can hook this up with a numerical parameter to adjust that uh, percentile ch change. So I'm going to just create some space here for our parameter. We're going to go to modeling new numeric range parameter. We're going to call this one percentile rank, and then we're going to change this to a decimal number. The minimum is zero to one with an increment of 0 0.05. That's 5%. And we're going to change the default to 0 0.9. And we'll leave add slicer to page just so that we have this by default, uh, uh, this slicer without us needing to do anything else. So this lets you adjust the percentile rank here using a slider. And you'll notice that it's actually added some useful stuff here on the right hand side, like the table and the measure that we can use. So all we need to do from here is adjust the percentile measure. Instead of hard coding the value here, 0 0.9, we're going to hook this up with this new measure that's been created. If we hit enter, as you can see, as we change this to, let's say, 90% as before, it shows us which scores or which students belong to that 90th percentile. And if we adjust this, there we go. So it highlights which students or which test scores belong to the 60th percentile. And that's really it for this video. I hope you now know how easy it is to work with percentiles in Power BI. Thanks for watching. As usual. Give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't so not to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you really like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you next one. Bye.